All right, so we're back with another one. Um, I'm gonna put a trigger warning in the beginning of this because it can be, could be, might be, who knows, slightly offensive to some, all, or, you know, none. But just in case it is, <clears throat> trigger warning, disclaimer, whatever you gotta, you know, whatever you need to be warned that this is not for the sensitive of heart and if you continue to watch, you're doing it under your own volition. All right. So enjoy, I guess. Okay. So if I were a white person and I said I want to transition into a black person mm -hmm. and I'm redefining what blackness is to fit what yeah. I view it as, right? Would you consider that appropriation? I consider that dodging and I consider that comparing apples to oranges because race and gender identity are two separate different things. Step forward if you agree. The transgender movement is indoctrinating our youth. Ooh. That is a question right there. Like, yeah, no, I don't uh I don't know if I a hundred percent agree with it indoctrinating them. No, that's what schools do. Um I would say it it might like entice them when, like when they see like the type of uh attention that comes with or the 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 positive attention like cuz it's not all good attention like I don't want to say that but when they see the positive attention that comes with it uh maybe they might be more inclined to explore it but I don't think it's indoctrinating them. Like, indoctrinating is a very strong word. Like, actually, let me go to the old Google so we know exactly what indoctrinating means. Like, so we don't misconstrue any words. I like to be really, you know, factual with my shit. And, uh, definition, the process of teaching a person or group to accept a set of beliefs uncritically. Oh, and then I mean, if you put it like that, if you put it like that, process of teaching a person or group to accept a set of beliefs uncritically, um, uncritically, I might not specifically say uncritically, because you can be critical, like you can learn about it, but have your own views and opinions on it. But I don't know. I think I slightly kind of little bit might agree. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> we are seeing, especially on social media, on TikTok, you're seeing a lot of people in this community really just targeting children. And you're seeing um, drag shows, even in conservative states like Texas, and um, you, even just media, movies. Like It seems like everything seems to be targeted at these kids. You have... Uh, drag story hour for kids and all right before we go any further that I just feel like that is not okay like no that's like I feel like that's almost like taking your kid to a burlesque show or some something like that like nah there is places for everything and like a, a a kid's story time nah like, and I get some people might be like, oh, it's cosplaying, it's dress up and stuff. Like, cool, I get that, but nah, let's just, you know, keep, no, I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't, I mean, if the parents agree with it, it's your kid, do whatever you want with them, but I don't agree with that. That's a no, no. Um, it's just really, I think, predatory in a way. And I'm not saying every trans person is doing this, but as a mm -hmm. whole, there does seem to be a route that they're taking to get to the kids. And when you hear Blue's Clues playing in the next room, and then you hear the gay parade song, it's Blue's Clues, you're not expecting the, the, 
to be talking to the children about that. Yeah. It really makes you wonder, are, are they really coming for the children? What the fuck is that? And I think we see in, in our population talk. now the, the rate of young children who are identifying as transgender, non-binary is skyrocketing. And I think there's something to be Agreed. said for people who are truly experiencing gender dysphoria, which we recognize exists, and those who are experiencing uh, what is now going to be called, or in the future going to be called, this social contagion gender dysphoria. Uh, it actually shows a, a little better on this one. Uh, the social contagion theory can be traced back to 2018 paper published in the journal PLOS 1 Where they're being exposed to it on social media or in school or mom and dad are having After intense debate and criticism PL PLOS 1 issued a a correction that they did not survey transgender or gender diverse youth themselves but actually surveyed their parents rapid onset gender dysphoria is not a formal mental health diagnosis at the time having a conversation about it with children and children are now starting to develop gender confusion or even babies right people right. who are being born they don't have to put the gender on the birth certificate and they're saying you can babies. choose whatever you want to be <laughs> like that's so dangerous and even lying to them saying like oh if we put you on hormone blockers at this age it won't do anything to your puberty it won't affect you long term and it's just a straight up lie and there's Absolutely. like an entire reddit thread dedicated to people who have transitioned talking about how much they hate their life now because they transitioned as a child and now they amputated off healthy body parts and are miserable all right can the disagree a step forward The fact that the trans movement has got people shook has me so excited. The trans movement is not indoctrinating our youth. Our youth are understanding who they are at a younger age. And from what I was hearing over here is, a lot of what y'all were saying, I wonder would you say it to the parents? Because we need to really look at what the parents of trans youth really go through. Trans youth, instead of them enjoying their life, playing with their friends, they're up in legislation trying to fight for basic rights here. One in five transgender youth have tried to commit suicide. Why are we trying to police them? But you're bringing it only to the parents. Being The question was indoctrination in general, am I correct? And then but they are part of but they are part of that conversation. Someone said something about drag shows coming to schools or whatnot. The kids enjoyed it. The parents just had a problem with it. But that's their issue. It's only someone dressed in drag reading a story. Is that drag been not anybody. blackface for women? I see it as a caricature of womanhood. But inherently as sexual insulting. as well. I have to agree with you guys. I do not like the drag queen social hours. Um, I, I I personally, as a trans person, didn't ever go to a drag show until I was about forty. I, I'm, I'm not for the sexualization of kids. Why are we teaching, why are we not letting kids be kids and bringing sex into their lives so early? I think so it's predatory early. in general to talk about sex with children. Yeah. Regard, uh, straight sex, any kind a, of I sex. Like, who's who's, 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 who's mm -hmm. teaching sex to third grade children? I really want uh, to know. Have you looked There's at the California piece. curriculum for sex Tennis education? Everywhere. You need to. I know that when I was in preschool, I got my first crush on a boy because um, to me, at the time, he was in kindergarten, he looked like um, Prince Eric from... Little Mermaid. Yeah, Little Mermaid. Um, I don't think, like, fucking him ever crossed my mind when I was four, but obviously, like, it would have been good to know that, like, it's okay, like, if you have these feelings for someone of the same sex. We think of, of youth in general, they're having you. sex at a lot younger age, whether we like it or not. Let's just keep it 100% real. Because I think that what old girl said is like that when it comes to like, all right, you're in the fourth grade and you got the crush, like the whole class ain't got a crush, right? Like you got the crush. So that's when it comes to, you cross that bridge when it gets to your kid, maybe like when they start thinking like, Hmm, I feel like I like this girl or I feel like I like this boy or I feel like I like this person, whatever. That's when you cross that bridge and you start discussing those things. Like, I don't feel like people should just bring it to their kid. Like, this is what this is. This is what you can be. You can be whatever. You, like, nah, chill out. Just let them, you know, go through life in their childhood being an absolute, like, pure child. And then once they start developing that type of thinking, then you address it. Of that? 
I don't. I do not think it's because of that. It starts at home with parents teaching their children, because one or two things are going to happen. Either you teach your children, or the world is going to teach your kids. That's, That's the reality of it. They are learning about it at younger ages from some adult, or even mm -hmm. their peers who learned about it from adults. Mm -hmm. That is in definition indoctrination. As a mother and seeing what my children are going to have to be <laughs> introduced to at such a young age, like I didn't even know what a gay person was till I was like 12. <laughs> and so they're going to be having these really heavy adult conversations at a really young age just because of their exposure. And that is honestly just scary because I don't want to have those conversations. That's why I will be homeschooling my kids <laughs> um, because I do believe it is my responsibility to protect them and shield them uh, from the outside world, which is targeting sorry. children. The trans community and the trans movement is really shaking the course of what people think gender identity is supposed to be. So in one sentence, you're saying that you guys are not responsible for the indoctrination that's currently happening with Absolutely children. Not. And in the second sentence, you are saying we are shook by the fact that you are responsible for it. No, you are shook at the fact that the trans movement has become what it is. And a movement that influences um, um, people powerful. all over the world, and particularly children. And we see it in the fact that the, the number of young Young people identifying as transgender, non-binary, gender fluid, gender queer is skyrocketing, which means that children are being exposed to these ideas, and it's certainly coming from institutions like the media, like Hollywood, like our public institutions and schools. So to say that that is not happening, or to deny that that is the reality, negates the numbers that we're seeing. When old girl says shook with that type of like proudness. Like, you're proud that your movement is, like, shaking people. That's not, like, no. That's not even a cool thing to even be proud about. Like, um, it seems like you're happy that we got you worried about your kids and they about to, like, no, come on, man, chill out. Like, no, no. I don't like that type of energy. That's not even cool. What I would say is that... The idea that there is a single transgender movement and ideology is disingenuous and mm -hmm. that at its core, being transgender is about separating sex from sex roles and gender roles that are compulsory. Do you think that children should be able to transition medically? No. I think... No. no. It just really depends on each individual um, situation. They should be able to make the best medical decision for them. I am comfortable sharing bathrooms with the other side. Yes, not a fucking problem in the world. Yes, I feel comfortable. Safe? That might be a different question, but... <laughs> Comfortable? Yes, I feel comfortable. What I think uh, the bathroom issue opens up is an issue of predatory men taking advantage of the opening. That and you hear what she said just there. Predatory men. Like, those aren't transgendered individuals. Those are men being fucking disgusting. Like, that has nothing to do with that movement. That's why I don't like when people be putting that on them like it's... Just a bunch of transgendered individuals out there flashing shit. Like, no, they don't be on that tip. Like, that'd be disgusting-ass dudes out there. Like, I'm going to dress up as a woman and go and show people my dick. I'm going to fucking send dick pics. Every no, I don't even, like, no. I don't agree with that being placed on that movement at all like nah that's not cool either now they could walk into a woman's bathroom or a woman's locker room as we've seen happen in instances like here in los angeles at we spa mm -hmm. and they go into a woman's space they expose themselves to the women and then they say well i'm a trans woman and you've opened up this space for me no. but we cannot blame trans, trans people for that and, and that's blaming you that's that's the that's the problem right here because again when you walk into the bathroom i'm not interested in knowing what you are what you identify as i'm trying to use the bathroom and leave out of there Mm -hmm. What people have tried to say is that when trans women go into the bathroom, they're being predatory, and that is not the case. That is something Nobody we said. do not blame on trans women. Although you were not saying that, when we talk about predatory behavior and when we talk about like the, the predatory cases, none of them have been trans women. So mm -hmm. let's just, I just want to make sure, I know she's not, I'm not, I know she's not strictly doing that, but because mm -hmm. she said that, I think it's very important that I bring that out sure. on the table. And and another thing, any person that does some shit like that needs to be charged immediately anyway. Like, so it's not even a, nah, no.
We've but discussed that. We have to have the conversation, and I'll, I'll open up the question. We know that if this legislation happens, if we move forward with this move, there are going to be men who take advantage of it. Now, men. I, I want to ask you, is your comfort as far as going to the bathroom more important than the female women that will be victimized by this? Who said female women will be victimized by this? They will, and they have. No, you're only assuming, but the reality of assuming. it is, again, when people are going into the restroom. When people are only going into the restroom, they're only focused on doing one or two things, and that's using the restroom. Yeah. I, um, let me, but let you me. didn't answer the question. Is your comfort more important than the female people who could be victimized by this? Okay, so let's, let me ask, let me help her answer the question. Which one do you think I'm going to get the shit kicked out of me in? Hmm. It wasn't the women's restroom. The, the issue that, that, that you're bringing part. up, first of all, is already violating a whole bunch that of part. laws. Okay, if somebody's exposing themselves in a bathroom, that's a whole different environment rather than just letting trans people in. Uh, in, in California, it's right now 100% legal for trans people to go use the bathroom of their choice. So I don't know what law you're talking about. You're asking this question as if I would not stand up for cis women that were in the restroom. And that's not the case. That too. That. Because... It's another thing I don't really agree with people doing is that adding the extra shit onto, you know what I'm saying? Un -trend, I don't know what, the, what, what you would even call them. Just regular men and women. Like, don't add no cis on it. Don't add no bleeder. Don't add no chest feeder. Don't add no whatever the fuck you add on, don't add none of that. Like, we didn't ask for that to be added onto our labels. Like, so please just don't be adding that shit on there, like, without consent, because I don't agree with the cis or whatever the fuck it is. I don't, no, please, just, man, male. That's it. Or just call me by my name. You, ain't got, you can pretend I ain't got no fucking sex. Just call me by my name. Just don't add no extra shit on there that I don't agree with. Like, because that's wrong. That would be like me adding some extra shit onto the end of your labels. Which, that would be fucked up. Um, nice dodge there. No but dodging. the reality of it is, one thing I, I, I'm noticing is we're reducing a lot of these particular conversations to genitalia. And it's not about genitalia, mm -hmm. it's about safety. Yeah, her concern is the possibility of predation. And, or, and that's, that's still a possibility. It doesn't matter if, if trans people are using the restroom or not. Sure. But what, you, what you're concerned about is that you're maybe, possibly that people feel more emboldened to put on women's clothes and go in the bathroom. But they're still violating the law all over the place if that's the purpose that they're going in for. Yeah, so I didn't step forward because, um, and I know in today's age this is going to sound very radical, and you know, um, but I just, I don't agree with um, the whole transgender ideology. And so for me, it's encouraging something that is based in what I feel is delusion. And so I don't think that we should be encouraging that by allowing men into women's restrooms. See, I don't like that kind of thinking either, though. That's kind of rude. Mm. I think that if that's the case, that to some extent, all gender is delusion. If we're looking at uh, historically anywhere from, you know, midwives after the enclosure of the commons in the 1400s, um, having their whole trade affected, or Brewster's having their trade affected, and now we don't think of women as, you know, Brewster's, or that creating beer is a womanly thing. These all came from social conditions. These all came, a, a lot of gender, regardless of biological sex, it didn't like naturally flow out of our genitals. And like, it was like, you know, we're like, this is how my genitals are. So this is like how my gender is going to be. That didn't happen. That's, that's not like, like a lot of people who are either transgender or who are um, LGBT in general. All my friends were girls. At first, I, I just remember there were a lot of things where like, I would kind of like come up against people telling me that that's wrong. Like, that whether it's something I like, something I want to do. It wasn't until kindergarten that like someone told me that I'm a boy and I was like, 
Oh. To her point, I don't fucking blame you about wanting all your friends to be girls because they usually have the best energy, be the less stressful, less bullshit, less, less period. Like, it always takes a man to come in and fuck everything up. Like, if it, when it's just women, that vibe be good, that energy be good, she be clean, she be smelling good, like... And you got the dudes coming in and fucking shit up, making shit dirty and being all fuck weird. <laughs> I don't feel comfortable going to any bathroom in this world, like in, in the current society we live in. And to make trans women the whipping girls of that, um, I, I think that's disingenuous. That phrase needs to be thrown out too, the whipping shit. Like, come on, let's, let's get that shit out of here. Stop it. But I do think that we need a systemic change to make ourselves safer. I don't really know anyone who doesn't feel a little bit uncomfortable going to the bathroom. And trans people are not a delusion. Let's make it very clear. We're here. We've been here for ages. We've been here since the beginning of time. We're in your history books. Um, and I don't think, I think it's very disingenuous to say that a whole identity is a delusion. Well, I believe that you feel like women. That's not what I'm mm -hmm. saying. I'm saying there is an objective truth and I don't believe in his truth, her truth, their truth, my truth. Like there is truth and... Who defined that it, truth? And like it's already it's already defined and i as a christian i believe god is the one who set truth <laughs> but who <laughs> defines that don't bring your religion into shit like just leave the religion out of it like because that's not a verified fact of anything like there's nothing backing it up so for you to say sky daddy said you're, you're a boy you're a girl like nah chill out leave that motherfucker up there let him stay up there until he come down here and be like, listen, I've been up there the whole time. I don't like what you've been doing. It's the only time he should be brought down and interjected into anything. Like, sorry, that's just my opinion, though, of course. Is the truth? Can you tell me who defined that? <laughs> God. Living in the Bible Belt with religion taking center stage. It's hard for a lot of trans and non-binary folks like myself to really be able to express who they are. I had to really take on my gender dysphoria in private. I couldn't talk to my mom about it. I couldn't talk to my dad, my siblings, because ultimately I felt like it wasn't going to lead to anything because there wasn't a lot of education in the cis community like there is in the trans and non-binary community. We're talking about a book that was written by man with his with his own bias who created chromosomes yeah i'm but personally not also, religious and i believe in science also, when we talk about chromosomes it goes back to the conversation we were talking about earlier about being intersex but yeah. we're not talking about intersex we're talking about people who were born as a male and they try to transition the whole fact that they're trying to transition into a female in the first place shows that they aren't actually that that or else there would be no need to transition right so you say okay i feel like a woman what is that what does that feel like yeah how, how does that and how do you know i'm saying i'm not saying i feel like a woman i am a woman I don't so then why did you I transition not, why can't you just present as a man but be a woman i transitioned so i could be who i was i did not feel like i was the person that i identified with when i was born so i took the steps to align my outside body with how i feel on the inside what makes you stand up every day and make you identify as a woman let me challenge you on I am a woman and I don't like being called a cis woman because I'm not a cis woman. I'm a woman. I'm not a birthing person. I'm a mother. So get mad at the terminology, not at trans people. It's your it's new terminology. terminology. But this is what this is what I notice a lot of cis women do. The terminology has been around for so long. Cis is a prefix. Cis means same. Instead of getting mad at trans and non-binary people for using updated terminology, get mad at Webster. You're not going along with the times and being educated mm. on the different pronouns that, and the different identities. You have to admit, some of the pronouns are, are, are kind of ridiculous. I mean, the, to be, with all due respect, I mean, I mean you, you, I'm sure you, you have to agree some of the pronouns. I don't think use. they're ridiculous. I think they're very expansive. Trans and non-binary people just want you to respect their chosen pronoun. We are not trying to force pronouns on you. Just understand that the terminology is going to continue to grow. If you're willing to educate yourself and understand, then you've got it. The ability to give birth is a woman's greatest strength. Greatest strength. That's a motherfucking strength, though, dog. Like, you can't even... There is no denying that type of strength. Like, 
the ability to to create and cultivate life just inside of you like that like that's a strength dog that shit I'm gonna have to agree I'm sorry <laughs> I know, I don't, is anybody else? No, I'm Can happy. the disagree a step forward? I'm sorry. That's just, what else can you do? What else can you do that is greater than that? Than make human life? Like, I don't even know. That's literally, without that, we ain't got shit. Like, until we learn, I don't know if they really got that, but until we learn how to, until they let us know if they really doing the cloning and like making people in the incubators and then the, that shit. Nah, I'm sorry, man. Like, cause without giving birth, you ain't got, you ain't got shit. There ain't no people. That has to be the greatest strength ever. Uh -huh. Due to medical issues um, from a medical procedure that I had when I was younger. And it's, uh, it's a hard subject to talk about. It it's, doesn't mean I'm any, I'm any less of a woman. It doesn't. Nope. But can we get another question? I don't, I, yeah, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I'm sorry. One of the things that I regret was the fact that I w would never be able to do that. But mm -hmm. I was honored in the ability to participate it from the other side. Women are amazing. They don't just deal with that. So. Uh, while giving birth is not a woman's greatest strength, I do think that only mm -hmm. biological women are capable of going through that process and, and bringing life into the world. I need to push back on that because we're also forgetting that trans men and trans masculine people can also give birth as well. And I don't think it's fair to just set it on one group that says that just biological women have that power to just give birth. And we have to be very clear when we look at the nuances of birth. I recognize that there are people who have different identities. There are a biological women who identify as men and then go on to, to give birth. Uh, I would argue, however, that those people are still biological women. And I know that is something that can offend many, but uh, that stands as my belief. So the correct term is actually cisgendered woman. Um, cis means same. It means that you identify with the birth that you were assigned. And so, you know, I just really, really wish that we would kind of be a little bit more mutable to the terminology because I think that's what really is going to open up that dialogue and that discussion. If I may, I think the crux of the conversation kind of comes back to our trans women women. And I think if we don't agree there, it's going to be very difficult to kind of keep the conversation going or even agree on the points that you guys are talking about because if we don't believe that trans women are women, then the conversation kind of ends there in terms of whether like men can give birth or not, if that makes sense. I'm not sure that's the case. I feel... Hello? Hello? But to the uh, my last point on the whole uh, the label part, the whole cis and whatever. <clears throat> That's like we I don't think any original ever asked to be called that. Like, so that's where it becomes, like, a rude and offensive and, like, fucked up. Because if we were to call a person calling us that, something that they did not ask to be called, then it would be, you know, it, we'd have a problem. Like, that's how you got to the whole shit in the first place. That's why I feel like only, it should just be trans woman, trans man non-binary whatever the fuck but did just leave original shit as original shit like until original people decide like yo we trying to change our shit let's revamp like just leave it original like please like the ability to give birth is not like the end-all be-all of a woman's like meaning and life and uh, 
It's not. Herself and her, her personality. And I think that if you can acknowledge that, I would also then maybe challenge the idea that womanhood, as opposed to like a female sex, like womanhood is a consistent thing that has always been one way. So how would you define womanhood? You sound like Matt Walsh. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good question. Womanhood, to me, is about standing in integrity. It is about being confident in who you are. And That's me, as a black trans like, woman, mm -hmm. should not be a threat to you. And what I see from a lot of cisgender women is they're trying to deem what womanhood is supposed to look like. I have my own perspective of womanhood. We can coexist in the same world, but the reality is we get so stuck on parts. Having a vagina is not the only thing that makes you a woman. I'm sorry. I feel like when it comes to the word womanhood, I just don't feel like it should be something that both should be able to do. Like, or what I'd be standing in my integrity and in my confidence. Am I, is that womanhood? Like, I wouldn't say that that is like, I wouldn't, I would just say that that's, I don't know, a fucking good person. <laughs> I wouldn't call that womanhood. So there, there's gotta be something else that that should be classified as. It takes integrity, it takes courage, it takes lifting other women up. It takes those things to begin to defy womanhood and there's so many other different things. Can I ask you a question? I can be sure. Um, okay, so if I were a white person and I said blackness is about integrity and courage and kind of the same thing that you've used okay. to define womanhood and then I said I want to transition into a, a black person and I'm white. Mm -hmm. And I'm redefining what blackness is to fit what yeah. I view it as, right? There's no objective reality of what blackness is. Yeah. Would you consider that appropriation or do you think that's something I should be allowed to do? I consider that dodging and I consider that comparing apples to oranges because race and gender identity are two separate different things. Because when we look at race, we have to look at many, many different structures of what whiteness and white supremacy looks like and how white supremacy can be manipulated into other things and what happens is the closer you are in proximity to whiteness you're able to weaponize it against other people it reminds me a lot of Rachel Dolezal who you know masqueraded as a black woman oh. it really did open up many more doors of conversations around it but it's still wrong <laughs> it's still not if you don't know the Rachel what's the name Dolezal whatever her name just Rachel D she'll pop up Type that shit in and look up her story. Shit's cool, Fair, right? because she will still ultimately have a privilege that I, as a black trans woman, <laughs> would not begin to have. What's What's interesting is that we're we're talking about race and and gender, or as we probably like to call it on our side, sex. Race actually has a more understandable structure for people being transracial. Race does actually exist on a spectrum. I'm biracial. Many perceive me to be black, even though I am also half white and half black. We black. label Shut people up. like President Obama as a black president, even though he is as well. Race has never had binary markers. It does exist on the spectrum. Gender, however, does have binary markers. As much as we try, as much as we change the way that we self-present, but it, I wonder, what you check on your application when you go and apply for a job? What do you check on that application? Black, African American, or do you be like white? Cause you know damn motherfucking well, if Obama checked, what, what if that's not anyone? <laughs> hey, that'd be funny as hell. That'd be funny as hell. Only reason Obama won presidency is because he checked white on his uh, motherfucking application for the job. That'd be wild as fuck. That'd be a great skit. Somebody needs to make that. But, man, you know damn well if he walked up in there after checking white on that application, they would look at his ass like, motherfucker, you lying ass bitch. Come on now, shut that bullshit up. Chromosomes are not going. And they call it the one drop rule for a reason, bitch. I, I know you, and I, I'm not calling her a bitch. I know she biracial and all, but. You got a good one drop. To change, okay. and uh, that's just a reality. All right, I'm gonna bring up a little point here because you, you talked about the binary side of, of uh, gender. Mm -hmm. Well, I was born a little of both. 
Uh, I believe my, I've never had my chromosomes checked, but since I, ha I fathered two children, I'm assuming I have the correct male chromosomes. So I was intersexed, and, and there's a lot of reasons that that happens, uh, none of which are well studied or understood, but uh, a friend of mine in the uh, pediatric uh, trauma world says about one in 150 kids come out with some degree of ambiguity mm -hmm. in their gender. For me, that, that appeared as always feeling out of place. And I'm, for the first week of my life, I was in the uh, surgical wards at, uh, you know, Naval Hospital in San Diego getting pieces of me cut off. So, and then they gave me testosterone for the first 11 years of my life. I, 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 I wish the world were truly sexually binary. It would make it so much easier. <laughs> But there is a little bit of a smear, and you know, as a trans person, I'm a very conservative trans person. Uh, um, I don't see the huge gender spectrum that a lot of people in the in the trans community do. Do I feel better having transitioned? Yes, absolutely. I used to live in a little shell, well, very large shell, but uh, you know, um, but you know, now I'm you know much more open about who I am. You know, is that the only thing that generally defines a woman? No, I don't think that is the only thing that generally defines a woman. Right. I think there are a lot of women who uh, may be on our side of the argument who will try to maybe invalidate your experiences by saying you, you can't give birth or you, you can't have a period. And while those things may be true, I'm sure there's a lot of other different struggles that you all are going through. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I would truly believe that you you probably are highly discriminated against in in our society and it is hard to be you. It is hard to go through the things that you go through and have to deal with some of the responses that you get from people. And, you know, it's it's not a struggle that I would wish on myself at all. It's not a struggle I wish on my worst enemy. Trans women should be allowed to compete in women's sports. Trans women should be allowed to compete in women's sports. That's a tricky one. <sighs> oh, that's a that's a good one. I feel like it depends on when you stopped your testosterone and started your hormone your hormones or when you started testosterone blockers and you know started the hormone shit like I feel like that has a big part to do only because if you get too far and in, in through the before realizing if I, before doing the transition you going to come out uneven when it comes to No, I, I I'll say no. I just to make it easy. No, I just I'm just gonna say no. I don't think it's no. I don't think it should be allowed. Sorry, sorry. No. Mm. I do think that trans women have every right to compete in women's sports. When trans oh, women are okay. on hormones, the hormones break their body down. Having gender affirming no, no. surgery breaks down the body, and so I think we really need to be educated before we jump to a conclusion that trans women are stronger than cis women in sports. And body types are different. I'll, I'll definitely Hi everybody. agree with that. Uh, I'll definitely agree with that because, I mean, I know some tiny little, you know what I'm saying, dudes, like if they go fuck around and transition and then get into a woman's sports, that's, it would be more of a match. Like, but, I don't know. I don't know. I find it <laughs> interesting that you assume the people who disagree with you are uneducated. <laughs> and I, I will yeah, speak exactly. out against yeah. that. I yes. think the research shows that uh, trans women do happen to have a biological advantage um, against biological women. Uh, even though you are taking hormones and that does start to change your body and level things out, we are talking about primarily people who have transitioned post-puberty, which means they do have male bone density, male wingspan, male hand size, feet size, lung capacity. All of these things are going against women, biological women, when trans women start to enter their spaces, their sports, and compete against them. Uh, and, and this is really concerning for me. I think for me, it's not a question of whether or not trans women can compete in sports. It's a question of how can we change 
the institution of sports in this country to make it equitable and to create more opportunity for cis women, for trans women. And like, that's kind of like why I wanted to actually ask you all, like, what has your relationship to sports been? I don't think you have to have a direct like relationship to sports to realize that women are being affected by this issue. And I do uh, reject the idea of equity. Uh, there is no way to, to come about an equality of outcome, which is what equity mm -hmm. is saying. There's a reason that uh, women's sports are, are less funded and less watched than men's sports. It's because men seem to excel athletically and they seem to press the bounds of athleticism way farther than women do. We now exist on a slippery slope. If it's female sports, is it then female locker rooms? Is it then female prisons, which we're now seeing uh, becoming an issue here in California, where biological male inmates are being put in female facilities because they identify as women? We have to discuss as a society how much we give into the feelings of wanting everybody to be accepted and how much we are willing to do that at the expense of biological women. I, I use myself as an example. Um, this is about how big I was in junior high school and, and early high school. I used to be able to walk up to a V8 engine block, pick it up off the floor, and set it on a table. Jeez. And if I was in powerlifting or weightlifting, that amount of, uh, I mean, that advantage was just unbelievable. I've been on hormones for 15 years. Did it weaken me? Absolutely. Did my, you know, my bone density really hasn't changed. My muscle muscular hasn't changed. And this is not a binary question. There's a lot of nuances involved. I just want to ask a question for what you were saying. Can you throw out some statistics? I don't think you need to have there. So there's there's a, an abundance of research. There's even trans activists who agree with exactly what I'm saying. And your hormones can change, right? And even she just spoke to the fact that her bone density did not change yeah. uh, in in going on hormones and changing these things. Yeah. And we can see it in. This is how you can even answer that question. Imagine them playing a sport. Those against those. Do you think it's fair? My old girl just said she could pick up a engine block. <clears throat> Come on now. <laughs> I'm not. I mean, I might be. I might be. But <laughs> shit. I don't think it'd be fair. Mm -hmm. Sports, as we're watching them, Leah Thomas is a great example. So if you can't throw out the statistics, we're not doing enough of the work. And let's I also disagree. be clear, let's also be clear, there are some cisgender women who produce high levels of testosterone as well. And so we really have to unpack it from all different sides here. Yes. Can you produce statistics mm. about the bone density of biological men and how it changes upon being on hormones and whether or not it levels out to biological women? I actually can not because when I you would think of those statistics, right I would think it was BS, to be quite honest with you, because the reality of it is we could talk about statistics and the research all day long. How are you going to ask her for statistics and then say, I don't got statistics because when I read them, I think they BS. Why the fuck do you want statistics then? So you can say, oh, this is BS. But it's about experience. We're going to be looking more at the experience because, again, I feel like she she's like old boy from uh, the cop and ex-felons one. She woke up that day and was like, I'm only going here to defend everything on my side. I'm never agreeing with the motherfuckers because I don't think she's agreed with them once. When we look at cisgender women who produce high levels of testosterone and who have been kicked out of sports. Mm hmm and been disqualified from teams based on something that they biologically cannot control, then what are we really talking about here? Well, we're talking about, I mean, data and that is overwhelming. And we're talking about what is also we're capable of seeing with our, our human eyes. I think it's very clear that if you compare maybe you to the rest of us, there is going to be a strength difference. There's going to be a bone density that. difference. But you're just saying that you don't know until we, we physically do girl. something and just girl. perceiving and assuming just because I look a certain way, that's not fair. Me, her could look, the, we could look completely different or whatever, but she may be stronger than me. I agree, but she we may know. have She have much more agility and vitality than I do. We don't know that until you actually do it. I'm until saying you it, has, it has been done. studied, it's been done. And it's so, been done, we've seen it. But it's time, an assumption, time and time again. but we're only it's, going it's, on it's, assumption at this point. 
Because again, it's not assumption when we see when we see it. Maybe it's the the news cycle that I watch, but I see it a lot. I see it quite often where they're showing mm-hmm. um, trans women beating. I mean, I'm by far. And you don't see women Biological dominating women. in the men's sports, right? You don't see trans men going into men's sports and just completely dominating and wiping the field with them. This is what happens when you, in my opinion, twist God's design. And when you go against <laughs> God's design, you create these problems that you wouldn't have. Shut your ass up. But she is right. If it was a thing like that, and if it was so even, and if it was so, like, you know what I'm saying, not a big deal, trans men would be in men's sports fucking shit up. Like, knock him off. Of, ah! Like, I'm just saying, it's not even. Have if you well, weren't going against what God intended. I'm going to take her side a little bit on that. And let me say one more thing, and I'm supporting you on this one. There are, I mean, there's a great deal of, of women that, and actually there was a lady in the last Olympics that they actually disqualified until she went on uh, androgen blockers to knock her testosterone down to a female level. Like I said, this is not a, a binary yes or no question. And, and the whole idea of messing with what you know God puts up you know, I, God put me up, okay, if you want to take that. Um, you know, and I had this conversation with a very uh, religious man in San Diego, and he was like, oh, I don't quite know how to deal with that. And God made you that way, but he didn't make a lot of the people transitioning. I understand, you know, but God also understands female. my transition. God, first of all, knew what I was going to be in my life. God already knew I was going to be trans when God put me here. So, so I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair when female. people oh, dip and dab. Man, Your relationship with God at? is personal. Yes. It's sacred. Yeah, and I don't think it's fair when other people Woman. dip and dab mm-hmm. in other people's relationship with God when they don't understand what they go through. God still blesses me. As a trans woman, God blesses you as a cisgendered woman. God is embodied in me as a trans person. I don't think it's fair, again, when we judge people's personal relationship with God. Gender identity, sexual orientation, none of that matters to a God that loves all. Gender dysphoria is real. (laughs) Gender dysphoria is real. Uh, Yeah, I agree. Yes, yeah, of course. Definitely, one hundred thousand percent. Like you're being insane, not angry. I think it is obviously real because many people experience it. But like any kind of dysphoria, whether it's someone who thinks they're overweight or anything, I think it should be treated as not reality. Like if I thought I was obese, I wouldn't want to go to a affirming therapist to tell me, yes, you are obese and you should, you know, get skinnier. Well, I, I had the opportunity of working on a DSM-4, I think. It was. The Diagnostics and Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorder, DSM, is the handbook used by healthcare professionals in the United States and much of the world as an authoritative authoritative guide to diagnosis to the diagnosis of mental disorder when we when we actually declassified uh, transgender dysphoria from a mental illness to a condition you know i had been at that point in time i'd been cross-dressing for 50 years and um you know because that dysphoria was there and every single thing I did to try to drive it away didn't work. I spent millions of dollars trying to be the coolest dude in the world. You know, I bought airplanes, I bought everything that I could to just show the world how masculine I was. It didn't work. It didn't go away. And I I did therapy. I I purposely went to a therapist that was anti-gender affirming. And literally, he said, you need to do this, <laughs> you know, and because it was so deep-seated. I spent six weeks as Gina with my son, and uh, at the end of that period of time, he asked two very fundamental questions. The most important one was, it's got to be truly exhausting for you to lead two lives. And I was kind of like, that kind of shook me to the core that my... 22-year-old son uh, saw that better than I did. So uh, shortly thereafter, I uh, announced to my family that uh, I was going to transition. 
Uh, my wife and I separated because of it. The kids were not necessarily shocked, but you know, understood and, um, and have supported me quite well. And my wife has actually become uh, a very good, you know, very warm, supporting person for me. Gender dysphoria almost made me kill myself. And coming from Mississippi, at the time, there wasn't a lot of access to gender-affirming resources, like hormones, if I wanted surgery, whatever the case may be. And a lot of us trans folks who don't have access like that, a lot of us have to do sex work mm -hmm. to be able to afford some of these things as well. Me coming up at the age of 20, and I knew I had a serious gender dysphoria, I did things to my body that I should have went to a hospital to do. That is something that's very, very hard Damn. for people to understand. A lot of us commit suicide because of gender dysphoria. And so it hits our community a lot harder. I do think uh, gender dysphoria yeah, is, is very much yeah. real. I think the issue that's happened, especially in the space of science and research, is that we've looked at gender dysphoria and said the only source of care that we can go through is blind gender affirmation care. I'll just read them, of course. <laughs> Receipts of gender affirming intervention, specifically PB. S or GAHS, I'm not sure what those are, was associated with 60% lower odds of moderate to severe depressive symptoms and 73% lower odds of self harm or suicide or suicidal thoughts during the first year of multidisciplinary gender care. And a lot of the research shows that this is not the route to go into. And other countries that have decided to do nonpartisan research, Sweden, Finland, have decided that. Yes, gender affirmation care should be. For adolescents with gender and what the fuck incongruence, the NBHW deems that the risk of puberty suppressing treatment with GNRH, Jesus Christ with the fucking acronyms, analogs and gender affirming hormone treatment currently outweigh the possible benefits and that the treatment should be offered only in exceptional cases. An option, but it really should be the last resort when it comes to treating people who uh, appear at clinics with gender dysphoria. And, you know, a lot of conservatives will deny and say, well, gender affirmation care does not make them happier. And in many cases, that is true. But there are the cases like your, yourselves where the gender affirmation care does make them happier. You know, I know a lot of people that have uh, transitioned, have untransitioned. I've talked with a gentleman at a uh, at a religious right convention one day, and he was sitting there screaming how Jesus got him out of his gender transition. And honestly, that was the saddest man I've ever talked to in my life. When, when I looked at him straight in the eyes and I, I said, you know, hey, I, I don't agree with what you say, but I 100% support your right to say that. And he just literally broke down crying on the steps of the Supreme Court. If know. I could interject really quickly, I do. No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I feel as though the medical profession is actually inching towards a space that is going to become unsafe for people who try to express their gender dysphoria. Because now we have young children coming into clinics yeah. expressing this, who by and large, statistically, about 60 to 70 percent grow out of that dysphoria. But because it's become a political issue where, where many activists have come in and say, no, you blindly affirm you affirm to, to the furthest extent that you can, rather than going through a, a more comprehensive process with these children, we have a, a, what I think is a medical tragedy happening against young people in this country. I have been sexually harassed. I mean, I haven't. Is that a question? I can't, like, agree or disagree with that. Oh, I mean, I lied. I have. Damn. Damn, that's fucked up. Damn, I have. Shit. Damn. Yeah, I think in our society, it's so sexualized, every, everyone and everything, and I think we owe a lot of that to pornography and just media, and I think the kind of acceptance that I, I do see more so in the LGBT community of, like, you know, sex is great and let like everyone talk about it and there's no shame and everyone's just blurting out you know the fact that we're perpetuating a culture that's frankly in my opinion disgusting so 
Are you talking specifically about LGBT people? I'm talking more so just about this sexual revolution, that the more sexual you are, the more partners you have, the more open you are about your sex life and everything, the more like liberated you are. And what is consent? Like, the, like you, people are coming out of the woodwork saying, you know, I was violated, this happened to me. And, but they like f drove home with that person. Or, and I'm not right. blaming them, but I am saying those lines are being blurred because of our just flagrant disregard for any kind of like actual relationship prior to the sexual encounter. And I think a lot of people are being exploited left and right. True sex positivity has been powerful. It has um, helped us to grow and learn about our bodies in so many ways and learn safe sex practices in so many ways. What I would blame for rape culture or for a lack of good boundaries or that kind of thing is we live in a capitalist system that has taken things like yep. sex positivity and mangled it and repackaged it and made it a whole other thing than what it actually is. I have a... Uh... I was sexually harassed for five years by a woman. That does happen because I'm pretty sure it's going to be we're men this, men that. It's 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 hard coming from a man, but it, it, to me it was harder coming from a woman because it was it wasn't expected. Yeah. Like I understand, you're you're going to probably touch on that about how men are more on the predatory side or the more harassing side sometimes. But I just want to like let you know that it does happen with women as well. Um, all through my life, you know, world's biggest kid in junior high school, I basically was harassed continuously for being gender non-conforming. Back then, you know, everybody in junior high school took showers together. I basically had a permanent welt on my bottom from people snapping towels at me because, you know, I wasn't as well endowed as I probably should be. I had, you know, pretty good sized boy boobs and basically was just unhappy being in sports. But, um, you know, it... I'm so glad they got rid of that, or I hope they got rid of that. That's a fucked up thing to even put kids through. You're going to force children to be fucking naked in front of other kids? That is weird and disgusting. I don't know what type of pedal made that bullshit up, but they need to be tried, charged, and I won't even say what else because they'll probably flag this shit, but no, I'm so glad they stopped that. Who thought to even be like, just throw them all in there together? happens everywhere. I have been sexually assaulted um, and uh, it didn't work out well for any of them. It's real. Let me just put it that way. It's absolutely real. Yeah, I think it'd be hard to find a person who hasn't yeah. been sexually harassed in some way, shape or form, whether you are male or female. I think it's a, an experience that we all share because we are in somewhat of a hyper-sexualized society and people uh, love to make those comments public. I am a, a podcaster and I do social media for a living, so as you can imagine, the onslaught of sexual harassment is quite, quite vast. From a very young age, I've had this recurring nightmare of something happening to me, trying to warn people and no one believes me. When you're not believed that you're a desirable person, and, it, and I really don't think rape has anything to do with desire, but when you're not believed That's in that true. way, when, when trans women are experiencing trans misogyny, we are the ones who are least believed when we are sexually assaulted. I believe that too. And like she said, I don't believe it is all, like ultimately a desire thing. Like. Motherfuckers just be wanting that power. Like, yeah, it's a power thing. Um, and it just, it just feels. And it's sick, and you need to be curb stomped if you've ever done that shit. You sick, fucking twisted pieces. Of shit. So disempowering and so terrifying when you know that you are someone who is seen as hypersexual, as inherently sexual, as inherently predatory, and yet at the same time you're seen as someone who can be isolated and sexually assaulted and not believed. I don't think there is anything inherently predatory about trans people. And I think oftentimes when we're talking from a conservative perspective, it gets misconstrued as viewing you as a threat. And I hope that that never comes off. And I think that Allegations of sexual assault, regardless of who they're coming from, uh, should be taken seriously. I agree. We found common ground. I think we agreed on something. <laughs> we found common ground. <laughs> and just like that, it's another one. And again, I just have to thank Jubilee again for allowing me to use this 
footage for you know this video and I hope you all hope you all enjoyed till next time stay safe